it's so on. This episode of The Infinite Thinking Machine is sponsored by Q, the K-12 High Speed Network, and the San Francisco School of Digital Filmmaking. Woohoo! For years, teachers have been bringing consumer games like Civilization and World of Warcraft into the classroom. And there are hundreds of digital learning games, from classics like Zumbinis to newer games like Sokicom. But recently, this whole gaming and education space has started to explode. Even old dudes like Bill Gates think that game-based learning is all that and a bag of chips. That's an exact quote, right? I know, I know. Gamification and education can be a bit controversial. But rather than take sides on a debate, we thought we'd just show you some stuff that we think is wicked cool. So game on. Little Big Planet and the newly launched Portal Puzzle Maker are popular digital games that allow players to build their own challenges. But Minecraft takes this idea to a whole new level by requiring users to create and mod the virtual world as they play. Now don't let the low res graphics fool you. This is a super powerful design and gaming tool. And with over 38 million users, we guarantee you that more than a few kids in your classes have used it. Teachers all over the world have started to weave Minecraft into their class projects. Just check out this amazing cell city that the seventh graders from the Brentwood School made. Okay, these bookshelves right here are the DNA because this is where all of the information is stored. These tracks right up here, they carry the um, ribosomes to other parts of the cell so that they can make proteins. Realizing that the game does have a steep learning curve, Minecraft EDU offers tons of resources to help teachers start using the game. And they've even worked with game designers to create a special version, making it easy for teachers to create lessons inside Minecraft and to control where students can build. So what are you waiting for? Get building. While playing and modding games is a blast, designing games from the ground up is even more fun. Sure, you can use slick digital tools like Game Salad and Kodu to make games, but sometimes kids need to learn the fundamentals of game design first. Enter GameStar Mechanic from the folks at the Institute of Play, an engaging and creative online environment for fourth through ninth graders. Through epic quests, kids use storytelling, creative problem solving, and systems thinking to design their own games, which can then be shared and played by others. They even have an apprenticeship program with professional game designers. To learn more about teaching game design to kids, check out the links in the show notes, including the awesome game design toolkit from the folks at the MIT Learning Games Network. Once kids understand the basics, you can put them to work designing learning games of their own. NYC Haunts is a game design program from Global Kids where students design an augmented reality mystery game in local neighborhoods. In each typical haunt, each player takes on the role of a ghost detective who encounters local residents that haunt their community until the issues have been resolved. The games are designed to be played in and around city libraries, teaching players about local collections, local history, and global issues. And students use the open source Eris platform to design mobile tools for the game. But when things get out of control with those ghosts, who are you gonna call? <laughs> to understand more about how games can help us learn, ITM correspondent Chris Satori had a chance to talk to some leading experts. Hi, I'm Chris Satori from Infinite Thinking Machine, and I'm here with Lucien Vitell of Game Desk. And uh, Lucien, can you tell us a little bit about Game Desk? So Game Desk is uh, it's an outreach research game company. Uh, that is really trying to think about in what ways can we revolutionize and completely rethink what learning is through through play and through interacting and through creating really meaningful and interactive experiences that connect to to difficult topics topics that aren't easily either accessible or immediately um, within a, a, a immediate intuitive realm of understanding. And in what ways can we leverage games and playful experiences that 
that allow us to build a real relationship with these things. So when you think about gamification or creating a play-like environment around content, you know, that's something that we think about every day. We created a new program called Dream Lab. Um, and basically all that is is we try to, we'll, we'll try to take the most boring, unengaging document and by the end of the day we've tried to build a game either high tech, low tech or no tech, either we've taken a third party app or we've built a card game or we've, we're, we're running around and sliding around in our socks and understanding friction um, in order to grapple with stuff that is actually um, uh, has, has great potential to be very exciting. On the topic of gamification, what do you see as gamification's big wins? Well, the big wins of gamification, uh, uh, there, there's multiple uh, forms and, and, and they have different features. And one of the features um, is that they create a constant um, reward, rewarding failure matrix. That is, uh, you, are, you are working within a context that by, by, by nature of you understanding its domain, that is, when you know you're playing a game or in a game-like environment, you immediately have a sense that you can playfully fail through a series of challenges, right? And that actually failure is part of the fun. Mm -hmm. um, and if we can actually bridge that to what we see as formal education, then that creates a very different context in which kids can overcome things that they're struggling with. What do you think are the uh, limitations of gamification? I think that if you take um, advantage of the more addictive qualities of games, that is, there are certain things in games that will make a person do something over and over again. <laughs> even, even though it's, very, it's not enjoyable, um, there are certain addictive qualities of a gamified experience that if taken out of context is no different than giving kids a dollar for every time they get an A. And now my final question, I have to ask you this as a game designer. Can you think of a couple of games that you played as a kid that were foundational in how you treat games today? Well, I played this game uh, called Out of This World. Uh, they just re-released it on, uh, uh, on, the, uh, awesome. on the iPad. I really recommend people play this because, you know, before a lot of the great narrative games of today that really use narrative uh, it was the first game that really brought me into a whole world and felt like I was playing a movie and, and brought me really close emotionally to the characters. Well, Lucien Vittel, Executive Director from Game Desk, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye. 28 million people harvest their crops on the game Farmville every day. As a planet, we spend 3 billion hours a week playing video and computer games. And yet, over one million students fail to graduate from high school each year. So we have to ask, how can we merge game concepts to make our classrooms more engaging? Jay McGonigal is a leading expert on gaming, and her latest book is called Reality is Broken, but it might as well be called School is Broken. She makes a compelling case that games are just engaging ways to solve challenging problems. And when we do solve them, we experience Fiero, the ultimate pride of accomplishment as we pump our fists in the air. Sounds like what school should be like, right? So let's take the ideas of gaming and work them into everyday classroom instruction. The folks over at Newton created a nice infographic on this that shows how level progression, time investment, and cascading information can be used by educators. Teachers like Paul Anderson, a high school biology teacher from Montana, are already starting to do this. He restructured his entire curriculum according to the principles of game design. And his awesome TED Talk shares his experiences so far. Yes! Success! And so uh, that look in his eyes, that look of learning and trying something new and failing and trying it again uh, is something that we aspire to see in the eyes of our kids. And we don't do that. A lot of the time it's glazed over look. And weaving gaming concepts into the classroom is just the beginning. Why not design a whole school around gaming, like they did at Quest to Learn, a public middle school in New York City. Now this isn't a gimmick or just a fun way to engage kids. Quest to Learn is based on deep research around how game concepts provide scaffolding and motivation to engage learners. You don't need to be addicted to Mario Kart or Bejeweled to realize that learners of all ages can benefit from gaming. So it's time to level up 
and bring some Fiero into your classroom. We could go on and on, but like all good games, we need to leave time for you to explore on your own. Just remember, don't get down on yourself or your students if you experience a few epic fails. That's all part of the game. You can always turn to the links in our show notes for a little help along the way. And if you have other gaming resources to share, just ping us on Twitter or Facebook. Now in the meantime, I have some unfinished business. I am the infinite thinking machine. Machine.